What's up guys, welcome back. So sorry I've been away for so long between recovering from my neck surgery and all the experimenting that I've been doing on the bloom technique. It has been quite a ride, let me tell you. So this is the piece you're getting ready to see. I'm calling it the Chinese dragon. Um, God, it's just so pretty. It's gonna shift in the light. The gold that you see, that, that stands out the most to me. That is Craftnik's pre-dispersed mica pigments. They're already ready to go. You just put them in your medium, uh, put them with some binder of any choice, and they give you all kinds of fantastic results. There's five choices, color choices now. They have a new one, it's like a pinkish red. But you get a champagne, a bronze, a pearl white, and the gold. Those are some of the options. But um, Craftnik is my paint sponsor, and I gotta tell you, their products are just phenomenal. Uh, they're, this is a painting that I varnished and three coats and you can see, if you're outside, you can actually see your face in it. It's kind of cool, but it's just flawless. It's so forgiving. There, I haven't run into any issues with them. So um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the whole bloom thing, because for those of you who don't know, I have not paid for the course. I have taught myself everything. I have picked up a couple tips and tricks along the way from other artists, as I always have. And ultimately, I've been 100% self-taught. This is like two years in the making for me. Actually, one of my very first bloom tiles is here. So I started off, you know, with hardly anything. And then I've worked my way up. And if you want to see some of my progress, it's all in my Art Addicts group. But, you know, from, from this piece to this one, and then I know some of you have seen this one. That's the gel stain on the side from Craftnik. And then um, I had a breakthrough the other day when I did this one. And then from there, it went to here and then to here. And then here so I mean I I can't tell you how much money I've spent and how much time I've put into this but I have worked so hard to achieve where I've gotten now and I'm still not totally there so a lot of my recipes you know if they don't work for you I'm always modifying everything and I just share my progress along the way so um, with that being said and I hope nobody will leave any negative comments because I will not tolerate it. That is not fair to me. I've worked just as hard as everybody else and I'm sharing my technique with you. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, so I already made my other colors already because I did the bloom last night, but I'm running low on orange, so I'm gonna make more. I pre-mixed a metallic orange here I wanted it to be more of a burnt orange, so I basically used metallic orange and I put some red coloring in it along with some magenta. I, I had to kind of like bounce back and forth between that and then I also added a high flow yellow to it and some gold metallic, which made it, you know, like a dual shift pigment. So anyway, I, I get crazy like that. I, I just can't help myself. It's like I'm not happy unless I'm modifying my colors some way or another. All right, so I'm going to use a newer cup because any cup that sits for a while, even covered, um, the paint dries on the side of it and I don't want like lumps or clumps or anything. So I'm going to take a quarter of a teaspoon. Wait a minute. I'm going to use metal spoons for the paint or no. Yeah. I'm going to use the metal spoon for the paint. And I'm just gonna scoop in, grab some, 
push it into the spoon. Kind of try to like that. That's about right. This off into the cup that I'm mixing. Okay, so once I have that in, then that was a quarter teaspoon. So being that that is a very heavy paint that I'm dealing with, the metallic orange is very dense. So something that might be uh, something that might be transparent, I might go lighter with the pouring medium or the, you know, the untinted base. In this case, I'm gonna put two parts of the pouring medium in there. So two quarters is a half. Uh, all right, so my half teaspoon, I'm just gonna reach in, grab some. I have a popsicle stick. I always get a bubble right there. <laughs> you can like chop it and that'll get rid of any bubbles that you got building up under your spoon or in your spoon but under it okay it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to like really really try and scrape the outer edges or underneath of the spoon but and just knock whatever you can get out into your little cup like I said I like making things on a smaller scale because I'd rather have I'd rather make more than have too much and I mean this is still like experimental phase for me so ultimately I don't want to waste stuff if it if the consistency isn't right and it doesn't work the last thing in the world I want to do is throw it in the trash I'm just I don't want to be wasteful <laughs> some people may not worry about it but I do like I never have a trough not saying that that's bad I just really tried very hard to not make a lot of waste with my paint all right so that's mixed now we're gonna need one part of the gel stain and glaze and that's by you know by Craftnique so I'm just gonna use this plastic teaspoon and that's a quarter right there and just pour that in Covers back on. Mix this up. For whatever reason, the gel stain, adding it to acrylic paint. Oh boy. There's the Amazon guy. <laughs> Let me put you guys on hold because my dog's gonna go crazy. You wanna show everybody what you think of the Amazon guy? <laughs> Laker, Earth the dog. Hi. All right, back to what we were doing. Ugh. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, now that that's out of the way, if you hear any fluttering in the background, that's still my psychotic dog thinking that he is a force to be reckoned with. All right, so eh, that's that's okay. That seems a little thick to me. See how it's leaving a trace and then staying there for a couple seconds? So at this point, you can do one of two things. You can add a little more gel stain or you can add some more of the pouring medium. The more of the pouring medium that you add, the it doesn't take away the vibrancy because it darkens as this dries clear, but is deceptive so ultimately I'll just put like two or three drops of water in here and then just stir it up I am gonna add it to the other one as well or the other one I'm gonna add into here so it'll balance itself out I'm sure because the other one is just the right consistency so let's just add two different colored oranges but I had forgotten I hit it with some high flows and other stuff plus I didn't add the gold into this one like I did into this one so anyway I really don't like to scrape my cups because the good news about this is when it dries 
the paint will pull right out of it. So I just grab enough to, you know, just leave up basically just a small covering because it will pull out in one full sheet when it's dry and then I can reuse the cup again until it breaks. All right, and he is still destroying that package. <laughs> he doesn't eat it, he just dismantles it and then walks away like, here you go, mom, clean it up. <laughs> My dog is psychotic. Oh, anyway, you having fun yet? Mm -hmm. He stopped chewing to listen to what I had to say. But yeah, between him, between the Amazon guy, the mailman, the FedEx guy, the garbage man, and anybody who has a loud van or truck, he just, he loses it. And I'm trying to work with him to not, to keep him from doing that, to try and let him know that that's not okay. But considering the fact that I'm filming right now, and I don't want this stuff to sit for too long, he kind of has a get out of jail free card. But I worked very hard to train him. He rings the bell when he has to go outside. We don't have to kennel him. He is so intelligent, like unbelievably intelligent. He looks at his treats when he wants a treat. He looks at the food cupboard when he wants to eat. He'll look at the door when he wants to go out if he doesn't feel like ringing the bell. Just, it goes on. I'm about to start a YouTube channel for him. <laughs> Just because I have so many funny videos of him. Especially him and my daughter. So, okay. That's good to go. So we've got gold, orange. I have like a reddish, like berry, pinkish color. Um, and then the turquoise. And then of course, we're doing white this time instead of the mint. Oh, I almost forgot. So... Uh, the Minwax pre-stained wood conditioner, um, as I said before, this is, um, it's not as potent as the gel stain that I was using, even though it has the same component, I don't know the amounts or, you know, what the difference is, but keep a lid on this thing and make sure you take proper precautions. Like I have four windows in my house open right now, a fan going and I'm not leaving this open for long. I just have to put a dab into the orange that I just made because I just added a lot more to it. So I'm just putting one drop, like that is it. Uh, this is just an eight by 10 canvas. We're working our way up, all right? So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna come around like this. This is the kit that you would get with Craftneak. You can add in the micas if you want, but you get eight colorants, you get the grand finale top coat, the universal white stain blocking primer, and then the gel stain and glaze. The primer, you guys, one coat, it trumps zinser and kills 10 to one. I only need one coat on my base wood and it works flawlessly. You can add another coat if you really, if you really want extra protection but it isn't even needed so my cell topper that I've used before I've for this recipe that I'm getting ready to show you I did vary it a little bit but you can use the Craftneak white uh, colorant you mix it with a binder which could be gel gloss it could be gloss medium it could be glue it could be um, uh, the PPG clear base tint whatever you just give it a binder and you make your own paint it's usually like one part of the colorant to two to three parts of a binder and you mix it up and then you add whatever more to get your consistency of the paint that you want for today's tutorial I am using Windsor and Newton titanium white and I'll show you exactly how I do that so I'm taking one part of the Windsor Newton for this one it's gonna be a half a teaspoon okay so I just squeeze it into there like that don't you don't have to overflow it just fill it up 
okay? If it is sticking over a little bit, don't panic, it's fine. So from there, I put it in my cup. I should have put the first component in first so it came right out. But anyway, um, just scrape it out with your popsicle stick real quick. I just used three parts of Floetrol. I started off with one part, then I went to two parts, then I went to three parts, and I even tried four parts, but three parts seems to be right on for me. So one, two, and three. Okay. You can scrape a little out if you want. I've done it both ways, with with it and without. I just want more, more paint today, because I need I need a lot. <laughs> anyway, after you get all that out, um, then what I've used in the past was the Minwax gel stain. The only problem I have with that is it smells extremely potent. So. I kind of started to, I started to Google to find out exactly what else I could use, found out the compound in it, and then landed with the Minwax uh, pre-stained wood conditioner. So that's right here, and this stuff is just as potent as the, um, the gel stain, but it doesn't smell as bad. If you're still worried about it in any way, put on a respirator. Okay, but I give this a stir first. Keep the cover on this. Yeah, but the colorants you see in front of me, uh, you can you can tint the gel stain if you want a little thicker. You can tint the grand finale top coat. You can even tint the primer. All of it is universal across the board. If you don't want to use the colorants, you can use high flows and fluid acrylics and regular acrylics, whatever. They all work totally universally across the board so you basically want a stream that goes for like two to three seconds and that's pretty good it's two teaspoons total in here all right so I'm gonna add three drops it doesn't you can go higher or lower the more drops you add the more cells you're gonna get and sometimes you get too many cells it's like as if you've over stirred your silicone so I just put one two course three okay stir that up really well always stir it before you use it because the um, it's aliphatic hydrocarbon compound is the active ingredient in this that gives the cells okay so it will settle on the top of your mix so I always just give it a whip right before I use it anyway it's running off the stick now let me make sure you guys can see that Hold on, sorry. And we're good to go. If it doesn't stream off your stick, add a little more Floetrol. You don't have to add more of the Minwax. If you, like I said, if you add too much, it's kind of disastrous. So I always say about three drops for every two teaspoons. You know, as a safeguard, you can always do like a drop a teaspoon or just modify it however you see fit. But yeah, ultimately that's it. That goes on top of the cells and then you blow it out. So that's the cell topper. All right, I think the outside puddle, I'm gonna do teal down first. You know my gold's pretty heavy, so I'm trying to just like float it on the top.
this off camera to blow. Because I know there's a lot of pain on here. Okay. Porn or cod? <laughs> and then we'll stretch it down some. And over. God, I don't want to lose that. Damn it. But I don't think it's up to me. <laughs> you gotta go cover this way. I will totally remove you from my painting gold if you don't behave <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep pressing my luck you know what I mean just a little over the edge and then we'll come back okay now let's come back So my white base coat was still way too thick. So next time I gotta put a lot more either Floetrol or water in it, but regardless. And there you have it guys, look at that. It looks like nuggets. I love when I get cells like that. Like a cobblestone kind of nugget. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you liked today's video. Um, I'm gonna do some detailed this is in my art addicts group, so you're welcome to join and follow along with me. Um, I also offer private pouring lessons if you're interested. Just send me a message on Facebook uh, through Messenger, or you can always leave a comment and tell me how to get a hold of you, or vice versa. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Hey guys, I hope you liked today's video. If you haven't already, click the Circle Res Inspire button to subscribe to my channel. If you ring the bell, you'll be notified instantly of any future uploads. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.